Okay, so what do you have in front of you is the financial statement for Grinding Gear Games in 2020. Grinding Gear Games is the company that makes Path of Exile, and in 2020, they took home $52 million in profits. And since that's profit, that's money that they got after everyone was paid a salary. That's money that they got after they paid all of their operating expenses, such as buying computers and getting office space and whatever else they might need to do to operate their business. And Path of Exile is a free-to-play game. And so that begs the question, if Path of Exile is a free-to-play game, then how are they able to sustain a business model such as this one? And any time a game is tooted as free-to-play, people get suspicious, and rightfully so. I personally also get suspicious any time a game is tooted as free-to-play. I always think to myself, what the hell is the catch? Why is this game free-to-play? People usually make games oftentimes maybe because they're passionate, but also because they want to make money. And sometimes it's literally just because they want to make money, right? And so anytime there's a cash shop, for me personally, it's important for me to know whether or not the game is considered pay to win before I want to play the game. And it's important, I think, to define what pay to win is before kind of going on with this video, because a lot of people have different definitions of what pay to win is. And uh, I kind of want to be on the same page with you guys before we kind of go any further. And so the way that people usually think about pay to win, I think exists on a spectrum. And you have one extreme right here, and you have another extreme right here, and some people fall do somewhere down the middle. And on one extreme, people think that any spending... Man, why is... Oh, hold on. Okay, so any spending that alters your game experience is considered pay to win. And so that usually means that if you purchase a game and I purchase a game and then I pay any extra money that changes my experience from your experience, that game would be considered pay to win. And people would think this for free games as well. So if I download a game like League of Legends and you download League of Legends and I purchase a skin, some people would consider that pay to win and that usually does come down to cosmetics so that's games like league of legends that's games like fortnite where you can buy skins that's games like minecraft where you can buy skins and then somewhere down the spectrum some people are of the opinion that no it's only pay to win if it gets you indirect power gains and so you see this a lot in modern MMOs such as World of Warcraft and you see this in old school RuneScape but we'll take World of Warcraft as an example. So World of Warcraft has something called the WoW token. You spend real money and you get this token in game and you could trade that token in game for gold in game and then you can take that gold and use it to do basically whatever the hell you want. If you want to buy items from the auction house that increase your power you can go ahead and do that. If you want to rank higher in PvP and increase your rank in a player versus player environment in World of Warcraft and you want to pay someone else money, you want to trade them money for them to then carry you through ranks, you can do that. If you want to progress through PvE and you want to progress through raid tiers and you want to get gear through doing high-end content that's PvE, you can pay people to boost you through that as well. And so although you're not directly buying the ranks from PvP, although you're not directly buying the good gear that you'd get from high-end PvE content in World of Warcraft, whenever you buy a PV uh, WoW token, that then allows you to pay other people to carry you through this content and to get you those wins that would be considered pay to win, for, right? And some people kind of define it that way. And on this extreme, people think that Games are only pay to win if you get direct power gains. And so that's things like the level boost in World of Warcraft where you just boost to max level. You just skip and you get the power gains straight. You pay money, you get the power gains. And a lot of mobile games have this as well, like Clash of Clans, where it's just you get the money and then they give you the gear or they give you whatever advantage that you need to then play the game at a huge advantage, at a huge power advantage, okay? So where, where do I sit on here? I draw the line personally right here. And I think anything here 
is not considered pay to win. So not pay to win. And these here are, and this is my opinion, right? Everyone has a different opinion. These are pay to win. Okay, so why does this matter at all? Like, why is this even relevant? Why do we care about pay to win so much? And the thing about pay to win, oh, let me make this bigger. Okay. The thing, why does it matter? Okay. So why does it matter? And the first reason why pay to win matters in games is because real life is pay to win. And what I mean by that is some people just are born into wealth and they're trust fund babies. Some people have uncles who, uh, let's say, own a business and hand over the business and kind of train you in the business and you grow up you know, owning the business eventually. Some people are born in poverty and they have a hard time coming up. And I've been to Africa a few times. And when I visited Africa, there was a time when I was walking past some people who were kind of doing some uh, construction. And I saw this little kid laying bricks. And this kind of took me off guard. And I'm like, why is this little kid laying bricks? And so I asked my buddy, I'm like, yo, why is this kid laying bricks? It's like Thursday. Why isn't he in school? And my buddy told me, he's like, well, probably because his parents don't have a lot of money. And because his parents don't have a lot of money, they need him to work to then raise money for the family so they could buy bread today. And so that kid isn't going to school and he's being disadvantaged from getting an education because he had poor spawn RNG and he had to lay bricks during his upbringing to provide for his family. So then by the time he's, let's say, 18, 19, 20, I mean, his whole experience in life, his whole work experience has been laying bricks and he wasn't able to maybe learn how to read. Maybe he doesn't know basic arithmetic or maybe, I mean, basic algebra. And so uh, he's a, he's disadvantaged and it kind of sucks. And usually in life, uh, you have Matthew's principle, which then dictates that the rich get richer and the poor get poorer. Those who have more will be given unto them. Those who don't more will be taken unto them. That's that's Matthew's principle, I think it's called. And it's it's just the reality of the situation. And since life is paid to win, I think it makes it critical then for games to be meritocratic. For you to be able to put in your own skill and through your own efforts and everyone starts at an even playing field to then progress through the game. And so meritocracy is beautiful. And meritocracy is just uh, getting rewarded based on your skill as opposed to other factors that, that might be there. Uh, everyone in a video game, whatever your skin color is, doesn't show in the video game, whatever your gender, all those sorts of things. If you're good at the game, you're good at the game. And, and that's what's so nice about video games, right? That's what's cool. And the moment a game becomes pay to win, those factors that exist in the real world then begin to seep into what otherwise would have been an escape from that sort of reality that we live in, right? Okay, so that's why it's so important for a game to really tone down the pay-to-win mechanics, and that's why I personally do not like to play games that have pay-to-win. And also, when a game has pay-to-win, it actually makes the games like worse from a game design perspective so it incentivizes poor game design and an example of this new world which came out a couple months ago uh they have this like it's like this liquid in game and it's called azoth and you use azoth to fast travel and new world before the game came out amazon the studio that makes new world amazon game studios uh, suggested they're like how would you guys feel if we sold the Zoth on you know the cash shop for real money and everyone kind of gave them some backlash and so you they haven't yet sold a Zoth in the cash shop I don't know whether or not they will proceed with it considering how poorly the game has been doing but that said once New World did come out people found that it was very difficult for them to get from place to place. That walking around was a pain in the ass. That it wasn't necessarily difficult, but it was very tedious. And so 
that begs the question, did Amazon Game Studios make walking around in New World a pain in the ass so that then they could sell you Azoth or Azoth later on through the cash shop? I don't know, but I fucking think so, okay? I think that's the logical conclusion here. And so that's why it's so important for a game not to have pay to win. Now, let's talk about Path of Exile's business model. Path of Exile's business model. Let me make a space here. And Path of Exile, of course, is free to play. And the way that I think about free to play in Path of Exile is a really... Let me write free to play here. So we have free to play, which is a really generous... Gener wow, I can't spell. Trial. And so you can play Path of Exile for 10 hours, 20 hours, 50 hours, 100 hours, maybe even a bit more than that, without paying any real money to decide if it's even the game for you. And this is really good compared to a lot of other business models. You have games like World of Warcraft, where they do things like saying, hey, you have to first buy the game's expansion, which is like 40 bucks, and then you have to also buy a subscription, which is like 15 bucks a month. And not only that, but if you pay us, uh, a subscription of six months up front we'll give you some free mounts we'll give you some extra stuff whoop de doo and so then what ends up and they do this probably in the hopes that people who might get bored after the first month or might get bored after the first month and a half are trapped in a six month sub and so it's like a gotcha like they do this you know and even in the new patch that's coming out for that game they have uh patch 9.2 in world of warcraft where to unlock something in that game called flying it takes a little bit longer than 30 days to do that. And if you're paying $15 a month for a subscription, and it takes a little bit over a month to unlock the thing that you need to get, then it's not far-fetched to assume that they're trying to make sure that one sub or that one month turns to at least two months. And I hate when they do this bullshit, but they do this bullshit. Path of Exile doesn't necessarily have this bullshit in the game. And I think that's really good. It's free to play. And that's also extremely relevant because that means you don't have to pirate the game to try it, which is what some people do. And that also means that uh, if you actually look at the Steam achievements for Path of Exile, you could see that about 14.4% of people finish the campaign. And there's a long end game in Path of Exile past the campaign. But as you can see here, the vast majority of people who have ever downloaded it on Steam haven't even finished the campaign. And so that would be considered the trial. And so they got to try the game, they got to decide it wasn't for them, and then they just fucked right off. And that's absolutely fine to do. And it's actually wonderful that they, they have it set up this way, so then people can do that. I, I think that's a really fair way to conduct your business as a game. And so that's what's really nice about Path of Exile's business model. Now, of course, they don't only have uh free to play as an option there are things you can buy you can buy cosmetics in the game you could buy stash tabs in the game right and those are really the two main things and uh we kind of talked about this earlier on the video when i brought up the spectrum uh cosmetics don't really change the gameplay now i did mention power when i was talking about the definition of pay to win stash tabs here stash tabs here in the game these do not get you power in the game. These increase your inventory space. Now, usually when you play the game around level 70, 75, 80, that's when you will feel like the space that they give you right off the bat when you get the game free to play is not enough space for you. And you're going to want to buy more space. And so you can technically continue to play the game without these stash tabs. But you would only do that if you hate yourself. <laughs> and by the time you're at that level, <laughs> If you really want to enjoy the game, you're probably going to want to buy some stash tabs, okay? These don't increase your power, however. And the thing with stash tabs as well is you're going to need them if you're going to want to engage in trade. And trade is a big part of the game for a lot of people. Well, you can buy things from people on the auction house without stash tabs. But if you're going to want to sell stuff, you're going to need to uh, purchase some premium stash tabs. And the thing about stash tabs in Path of Exile is once you've spent 20 bucks, 40 bucks, 60 bucks, and maybe even 80 bucks, depending on how much of a hoarder you are on stash tabs, you're not really going to need to buy any more. And so this is why I would consider stash tabs in Path of Exile buy to play. 
And that's why I'd consider the game a buy to play game with cosmetics. And since I don't personally consider cosmetics pay to win, I don't think it's a pay to win game. That does raise a question though. Do cosmetics ruin the integrity of the game in any way? And the reason why this is a question for me is because I remember back in the day when I was 12 years old and I was playing vanilla World of Warcraft for the first time and I was young and I was stupid and I remember running around a town or it was a city called Stormwind. If you've ever played World of Warcraft, you know Stormwind. It's an alliance city. And I remember seeing some characters, some real life characters who looked fucking badass. Like they were decked out. Like I was in some like skimpy little thing, like like linen, like bullshit. Like I looked like shit because I was probably like low level at the time. And I'd see these people in Stormwind who would look really badass. And I'd be like, holy shit, this guy looks really badass. And then I remember inspecting his gear and seeing it being really high level and being really powerful gear. And I, I rem it's, I'm 26 years old now. I remember that experience from when I was 12. That's how, like, in awe I was. I'm like, holy shit, this guy's a fucking badass. I want to be like him one day. But when you sell cosmetics in a cash shop, and you see people running around in Path of Exile, and there are sp specific locations in the game where you can see other players, and they look really cool. You know they they don't look really cool because they accomplish something in game more often than not, not because they've uh, grinded more things out than you, or because they have more skill per se. You know they probably just want swipe, swipe, swipe to look cool. So does that ruin the integrity of the game at all? I think it does a little bit. But I still wouldn't consider it pay to win. And I personally think it's a worthy trade for, for these things here. For us to be able to have a free to play game. And also actually something I haven't mentioned. Is that when you have a game that has cosmetics like this. And people can uh, invest in these things. And some people like to buy a lot. Some people spend a lot of money on cosmetics. They spend hundreds of dollars. Some people spend thousands of dollars on cosmetics. And whenever that's the case. You have a situation and, and usually, like, in the gaming industry, these people are referred to as whales because they, they're big. They have uh, big wallets, apparently. And so these are often referred to as whales in, in the business world in general and uh, particularly in gaming. And the thing about whales in Path of Exile is that whales, excuse me, whales fund the game for the rest of us. And so... Because Path of Exile is also a game that is in continual development, they're adding new stuff every three, three months. Uh, it's not a game where you just buy it once and then they don't have to do any more work and then that was the trade. They did the work, you bought the game and that's it. No, the game is in continual development. They're continuously adding new new stuff to the game and Path of Exile 2 is coming out soon and they're not going to charge for that either. And you're going to be able to take in all of the stuff that you've purchased from Path of Exile 1 and it stays with you into Path of Exile 2. And because the game is continuously being developed, they're going to continuously need to pay engineers and they're going to continuously need to have money to, to operate a game that's continually developed like that. And when you have people who are paying for cosmetics, even though you bought stash tabs maybe just one time, you bought your $20 worth of stash tabs, you bought your $40 worth of stash tabs, and you were done, you can continue to play the game and continue to experience all of the new content without even a subscription fee because people are buying the cosmetics. And I think, I think it's really good, actually. Like, the people who want to get cosmetics get their cosmetics, and the people who don't want to spend money on that or who want to spend much less money on that can continuously get the up free updates of the game. So the whales are kind of fronting the development costs for people who don't want to buy cosmetics. And it's so good. I think it's a phenomenal business model. And so although those cosmetics do ruin that sort of integrity that I was just talking about a little bit ago, uh, I think it's worth it for these reasons here. For the ability that to make the game free to play. And for the fact that whales then can fund the game for people who don't want to pay for cosmetics. I think it's a pretty good deal. Now, the last thing I want to cover about this topic is the future of the game. The future. What is it looking like? Because the future for gaming when it comes to pay to win isn't looking that good in a lot of industries. The CEO of Square Enix came out recently and saying NFTs were fucking badass. And I don't know about you. But I've seen no good practical application of NFTs in a game yet. It kind of seems like they're trying to add these into the game to then monetize on the consumer more. It's not something that I see consumers asking for. It's something that I feel like companies are trying to push onto the consumers. The whole NFT situation so far, not looking good. Okay. And so actually, there's another Path of Exile content creator. His name is Tarky or Tarkath. 
and he posted out a tweet. Cool dude, by the way. Uh, I don't know him personally, but I like his content. And he posted out a tweet, and it was about NFTs. And a member who, an, I'm sorry, an employee who works at Grinding Gear Games, then responded to Tarky Cat, and he, she said, "Oh, by the way, Chris Wilson, who is the founder of, or one of the founders of Grinding Gear Games, uh, told me to tell you." that NFTs can go fuck right off. And so that's great news. I'm glad that the leadership at Grinding Gear Games is shunning NFTs. Thank fucking God, because it's looking to be like we might be in a gaming dystopia and they're not going to put that in the game probably. And so thank fucking God for that. And that's it for this video. If you like the video, like the video. You know what to do. Every content creator tells you what to do. And you'll see you in the next one. Peace.